Hello, fellow students of linguistics. We all know that our language faculty is one of our defining human characteristics. It's what makes human civilization possible. Through it, we share stories, ideas, feelings, knowledge, and culture. We do so intergenerationally, so civilizations can continue to develop despite our limited lifespans. We use it to lie, praise, console, insult, negotiate, reprimand, explain, excuse, and blabber on and on about all of these things. So what would it be like to suddenly lose this ability? How could that even happen? And what would life be like without it? Language begins and ends in the brain. It requires a series of incredibly complex and delicate brain structures to accomplish. When any of these becomes damaged, our language ability can suddenly, inexplicably vanish. Loss of language has a name. Aphasia. The most common cause of aphasia is a stroke. Around 20-40% to 40 of strokes result in some degree of aphasia. During a stroke, blood flows to parts of the brain is cut off. If language areas of the brain are deprived of oxygen and nutrients that they need, they can start to die, and language goes along with them. Strokes aren't the only cause of aphasia. Head trauma, infections, and brain tumors can have similar effects, but strokes are the most common. Since the brain areas involved in language are so complex, and the type of damage inflicted can vary so widely, no two patients with aphasia often show the exact same language deficits. However, we can distinguish between two broad categories of aphasia by understanding the role that two critical brain areas play in language. Broca's area and Wernicke's area, named after the 19th century physicians who discovered them. Both men working separately showed that certain types of language deficit corresponded to damage in certain brain areas in their patients with aphasia. Broca identified the area associated with production deficits, and Wernicke the one associated with comprehension deficits. So, damage to Broca's area generally leads to language production deficits, or Broca's aphasia, also called expressive aphasia, or non-fluent aphasia. Some common symptoms include difficulty producing sentences, communicating using primarily meaningful content words, the omission of grammatical words such as the and is, among many others. Conversely, damage to Wernicke's area leads to language comprehension deficits, or Wernicke's aphasia, also called receptive aphasia, or fluent aphasia. Some common symptoms are difficulty following instructions, fluent but nonsensical speech, inclusion of made-up nonsense words, and again, many others. As I mentioned earlier, those who suffer from aphasia never show exactly the same symptoms. However, broadly distinguishing between Broca's and Wernicke's aphasia is something that even us students can manage. Let's meet some folks who are working to overcome their aphasia with the help of speech-language pathologists. We'll focus on more archetypal examples of both Broca's and Wernicke's aphasia. Hi, Byron. How are you? I'm happy. Are you pretty? You look good. <laughs> what are you doing today? We stayed with the water over here at the moment and talked with the people over them over there. They're diving for them at the moment. They'll save in the moment. He'll have water very soon for him. With luck for him. So we're on a cruise and we're about to We to will soar it right here and they'll save their hands right there for and, them. And what were we just doing with the iPad? Uh, right at the moment, they don't show a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> the iPad that we were doing. We, from, like here? I'd like my change for me and change hands for me. It would happen. I would talk with Donna sometimes. We're out with them. Other people are working with them with them. I'm very happy with them. And what 
happened to you? Um, stroke. You had a stroke last year? Yes. And um, what happened? Can you remember what happened? Um, 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 school and English class. Okay. And I, um, book and I read it aloud. Um, but I can't because strike. And so I send the and um also um it's um the same as um the same of kind of thing as um you, you know pins and needles yeah like pins the and same needles. and also <coughs> arm as for leg egg uh, leg yeah. Aphasia is, at best, frustrating, and requires the support and patience of others to live with. Speech-language pathologists help patients to assess symptoms, offer communication strategies, and administer language training. But the majority of the work is done by the patients themselves and those close to them, who often need to dramatically alter their lifestyles to cope. It's important to note that aphasia is not related to loss of intelligence. Aphasia does not result in the inability to think or reason. Thus, aphasia is a type of language barrier. This is especially evident in modality-specific aphasia, where, for example, someone's speech may be affected more negatively than their writing, or vice versa. Speech-language pathologists may recommend that such patients supplement their speech with writing. In some cases, sign language might offer an alternative modality for aphasic patients to try, depending on the patient. But can aphasia be cured, or reversed, or improved? This, of course, depends on the extent of the damage. In more minor cases, symptoms can subside after two or three months. However, in more severe cases, where symptoms persist longer, it's unlikely that a full recovery is possible. The extent of recovery depends on a wide range of factors that are still being researched. Current understanding suggests that the nature of the brain injury is the factor that greatest influences your likelihood of recovery. The most promising areas of current research focus on improving language interventions and treatments, as well as understanding how recovery occurs using neuroscientific methods. There are also initiatives such as the Aphasia-Friendly Business Campaign, which aim to make workplaces more accessible to those suffering from language disorders. So what is it like to live without language? Well, the answer seems to be difficult, but not impossible. It was my stroke anniversary last week and this is why I'm going to um, have a new video. It was my 11 years after my stroke so that's a long time. Um, last year I was supposed to do a video but I didn't which was very lazy of me. And I did a video um, near to Christmas um, because I was engaged. We went to Australia, seen my sister and their family. And then we had a holiday as well with my parents and my fiance now. Um, 